podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. It's a list that no one wants to top. We're talking about unemployment in our state. U.S. labor statistics calculate unemployment in Scotland County is 15.9 percent, among the highest in the state. North Carolina Rising examines why this region is struggling more than others and what they are trying to do to bounce back. Elizabeth Wilder reports. You may have never heard of spin closing thread, but you've probably seen it. Companies use it to stitch up bags of pet food and charcoal, or to reinforce products like your garden hose. Service Thread in Laurenburg makes this specialty yarn. In fact, they are the largest producer of spin closing thread in the country. Common sense is kind of the, the, the rule that we follow around here. You know, what would we like? I mean, we, we want to save money. We don't want to have waste. We want excellent quality products. We want good service. The same things that our customers want. With 85 full-time employees and yearly sales around $20 million, the textile maker is alive and well in an area where other manufacturers are gasping for breath. To me, it's, it's, it's frustrating, being a, this being my hometown, being a member of this, this small, poor rural community, to see the decline. When you know, this economy, really 2008, started to bottom out at the state level, we were already there. Scotland and surrounding counties felt the economic sting early on when jobs began shifting overseas. We're at about 22 percent in manufacturing. If you look at the state average, it's somewhere around 11 percent, depending on what numbers you're pulling, but, but we're still double the state average. Today, community-owned Scotland health care system, with a workforce 1,000 strong, has become the area's largest employer. The vast majority of our patients are either come from Medicare, which is a federal program, or Medicaid, which is the state program for the uninsured. So probably about 65 percent of our patients are Medicare or Medicaid dependent. So as we lose some employers, uh, we, we take that hit. Speechless. That was Harlan Chavis's reaction when he found out his manufacturing job as a welder had vanished. Since 1937. It was a dollars and cents decision that led Chavis Just here to, to the end of the trail around. coin shop in Laurenburg. Being laid off sitting at home for two years was really, uh, you know, really tough. Chavis but, hopes this is the beginning of a new career as a retail business owner. You don't know if the investment that you pull into your business is going to come back twofold, threefold, or if, you, if, or if it's going to be on the minor side. You just don't know, and, and it's, it's all a risk, it's all a gamble. The GATE program is expected to improve the odds for displaced workers. GATE stands for Growing America Through Entrepreneurship. North Carolina is one of four states providing professional development and counseling through the Small Business Network at the state's community colleges. The Small Business Center and, and my colleagues at SBTDC and other agencies that promote entrepreneurship, we're here to unite the community. Um, small businesses, I believe, and it's been said before, the backbone. And a lot of time, just takes a little spark to take that dream to the next level to own your own business. Motivation uh, is very ominous for people who are struggling and they see no light at the end of the tunnel. Our job is to provide that light and to provide the support that people need. That's what we're all about. The Small Business and Technology Development Center here in the Cape Fear region claims that they've helped create more than 160 new jobs and 2.6 million in capital investments since 2010. Riskier investments in the past, so yes, they are kind of slow to getting out there, but the purpose of CAP is to let them know that there are funds available through the government that can help them make more riskier decisions. Of course, securing financial investment can be the stumbling block when starting a company. The state recently announced expansion of the federally funded capital access program to lend $800 million to businesses that might not qualify for a traditional loan. These businesses will pay a fee to participate and help cover the risk. 
all businesses, uh, whether you're a startup, uh, been in business for years and years and years, uh, and it's available to any business up to 500 employees. The loans, entrepreneurial programs, and planned business incubator space, well, they're all part of a grand plan. Everything we're, we're doing here is trying to, to bring more jobs and increase the tax base because those two factors are really what economic development is about. But this economic developer warns that the rules have changed when it comes to launching business and luring new industry. I think the adage was you shot at anything that moved and you claimed everything that fell and, and those were the good old days when you could do that. Uh, now it's, it's more of a companies are much more lean, they're much more uh, automated so they require less employees. The trend? Fewer employees with better job skills. I had no idea Service Thread was even in Lauringburg, North Carolina when I graduated from high school. And when I graduated from high school, I was either going to uh, be a rock star or own a guitar shop. Even existing businesses are requiring more training. Service Threads and employee Brian Bullock to Richmond Community College. The company, according to Jay Todd, is always looking at professional development and other ways to improve their customer service while trimming cost. Waste reduction and conservation, like installing compact fluorescent motion lights and leasing the rooftop for solar panels, allows Service Thread to reinvest in growing the business while taking advantage of green tax credits. We're a, a certified green business. We were certified by a third party. For what we do with our waste reduction, of course, the solar panels are a big help for that effort as well. So for us, it's just looking at the cost, looking at what we do, and trying to really provide value in everything we do to our customers, our employees, and our suppliers. They're desperate to find ways to provide value for the community, too, by keeping jobs in a rural area that desperately needs them. As for the planned incubator space in Scotland County, the Golden Leaf Foundation has committed $200,000 toward the $1 million goal. Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV.